I'm Angela Wolf, fashion designer and online instructor, and we are continuing on with our trench coat. Today, we're gonna sew the sleeve. I'll give you a few tips for this. So first of all, you wanna start with prepping your sleeve. You can see I have interfacing on the top area here and the top area here. What this does is this stabilizes these areas that are curved, so this would be under your arm. It won't, this will prevent it from stretching. Notice I have my underarm notch on here and my little notch is on the sleeve. And then for the hem, my hem is usually two inches. If your pattern is different, you can change it, make it longer. A two inch hem looks really nice on a tailored jacket. So two inch hem, and then I have an extra two inches for this, so when this is fold up, folded up, it helps protect that area down there. So put fusible interfacing on both of those, and I have my shoulder notch right here, if you can see that. So first we're gonna sew, and then I'll come back and talk about the lining and the sleeve head. All right, so I have one right here. So what you wanna do is line up the longest end first. This will be your back sleeve. And line up, make sure the hem lines up. Check your notches to make sure those line up. And we're going to start sewing. Again, my pattern has a half an inch seam allowance. And I'm using a stitch length of 2.5. You could use anywhere from 2.5 to 3.0. Remember, that always depends on the thickness of your fabric. There's one notch, and then your next two notches, you might need to stretch just a little bit, just a smidge, because that's the curve for your elbow, <laughs> if you ever wondered what that's for. The two-piece sleeve is really nice because it will lay the same way your arm does when you're standing, so it just fits nicer getting to the bottom, and I can see I have a notch right there for the hem. I'm just gonna turn this just a little bit and press to the bottom. All right, now let's go press. Now this fabric frays a lot, so I would either press this, I would have surged these raw edges and then press this open, or I would have finished it with the bias edging, edging like we did earlier. Give it a little steam and a little press. And I'm not gonna go ahead and press this all the way down at this point, because there's no need. It, you'll get the idea. All right, so this is your sleeve area that needs to fit into your jacket. This is where a lot of times people will see this gets a little wrinkly. This will really tell if your jacket was made really well. So I'm gonna give you a couple tips for easing this. First off, even if the jacket's not lined, I usually add a sleeve head for a set-in sleeve. This is what you call a set-in sleeve. So I'm not going to sew this other side yet because you won't be able to see it as well. But you would go ahead and sew the other side of that sleeve so it's enclosed. This is a piece of bias. Remember we cut that two inch bias earlier? I told you we're gonna use it later. If you cut this, put a little curve right here. And you have to imagine this is going to be sewn into this sleeve head area when you attach it to the jacket. And I'm just gonna cut this end so you can see just how long this is. This stretches a little bit. And then what it does is when the sleeve is attached, it just has a nice curve. So we'll be using that, but first let's prep our sleeve. I'm going to go and turn it on a basting stitch, which is a 5.0. And I'm going to run two rows of stitching. I've tried this with one row, which is fine, but two rows just seem to make a much better sleeve cap, which you'll see. Now, don't cut your thread. Lift up and give yourself a thread tail. So cut your thread, but give yourself a thread tail first. And then let's run one more row right next to that other one. There's no magic width, but I would say maybe an eighth of an inch or something of that sort. Wrap around the sleeve. If you're using a natural fiber, like wool, that's one of the easiest fabrics to ease that sleeve head. Now, this pattern only allows for about a half of an inch ease. If you have too much ease in your sleeve cap, you'll have to go back and alter your pattern, which we're not covering that here, but I have other tutorials somewhere for that. All right. So here's my sleeve. I'm gonna lay this out so you can see this. So you just give it a little tug. It's usually easier if you pull from the bobbin side. 
See how it's just easing up. Go all the way around the sleeve head. Looks kind of funny, doesn't it? But I usually tighten it a little bit more than you actually would wear it on your jacket. And then what I do is I go back and pull this out a little bit. Okay, so let's just go to the jacket for a second so you can see what I'm talking about. On here, you can see there's a sleeve head inside of here and this gives it an, it just lays across the edge of your arm really nicely. So I'll come back here and now you can relate to where I was pressing that. And I'm just gonna put this on my ham and kind of just maneuver that. And you just start steaming. And again, if your fabric is wool, you will actually see your fabric just kind of melding to this ham. Why would you use a ham? Well, if you think about it, it kind of looks like your arm. Well, not literally, but you know what I mean. It's curved like your shoulder. All right, ease that in a little bit more. And this is just an easy way. I do this for all of my set-in sleeves. Now, if your fabric is a polyester blend, don't let your iron touch the right side of the fabric. Just keep the steam away from it a little bit. Feels like you're in the spa. <laughs> All right, and then just kind of finger press that around. The key is that when you insert this sleeve, you don't want any wrinkles. So the more you prep it before you insert it, the easier that will be. All right, we're just about there. And I'm doing, I'm taking my time to show you this because this is the most important part of the sleeve before you even get rolling on anything else. Okay, so then you have an option. You can either, of course, this whole sleeve, sleeve would be sewn. You can either attach this into the jacket now, or you can attach the sleeve head. So I'm gonna bring the sleeve head over just to show you how this attaches. Again, I'm not piecing this whole thing together because if I had the whole jacket up here, it's a little bit difficult to see. So you're going to just use your same seam line. You're sewing this on the same seam line. Not in the seam allowance, not in the jacket. Try to keep your same seam allowance. Now you can't see your seam allowance on here, but you can use your guide. If for some reason your sleeve is just gathering too much at your shoulder, you can move your seam allowance in just an eighth of an inch. It won't affect the fit of your sleeve or anything, but it will help get rid of this extra at the top. So again, for now, I'm just gonna keep this on a basting stitch because sometimes I will just put this on the sleeve before I even insert it into the jacket. I'm gonna go with the 4.0. Little back stitch. And then I'm going to pull this as I go around the sleeve. And this actually helps to keep that sleeve cap nice and curved. And you don't, this is just a cotton fabric. You could use, you've probably seen in past episodes, I use wool quite often, uh, fleece, anything like that, horsehair canvas. And this is what that does. See how curved that is? And then I'll go back to the right side. And when I sew this in, I will make sure that I pull out my basting stitches and make sure that, although you see some wrinkles here, those will all press out. So the idea is that this sleeve head will help make that stand like that. So let's talk a little bit about hemming and the lining. So, earlier I showed you how to finish the hem or the side edges. For the hem, you could do the same exact thing. And I'm just gonna grab one little piece, we'll take it to the sewing machine. Again, you could use a one inch wide, but I prefer a little bit longer for the hem. So I'll bring that to the sewing machine and then let me show you one more thing before I go down there. This is the lining. I cut the lining the exactly the same as the sleeve, except I take one inch off of the hem. This is if you have a two inch hem, just take one inch off and cut this exactly the same. Now this is different if you're lining the whole jacket, but you can line just the sleeve. So what I've done here is I've sewn this entire sleeve. This is, you can picture this is what it would look like. Hope I put it on the right way. <laughs> and then this will in insert into the sleeve. So what I will do is I will actually sew this is the right side, to the right side of the sleeve, just like that, after the sleeve is sewn. And then what you do is you'd pull this right through the sleeve, 
and attach this to the sleeve cap. So this would actually attach up inside of here. And again, I'm not sewing this together because I think it's easier for you to see if I keep this apart, just like that. Does that make sense? And then you would sew this entire piece to your jacket. So I don't need to alter for it, attaching an entire lining. This is just lining the sleeve, which really makes it, if you're going to put on your jacket, it's easier to slide your arms in. So let me just go show you how I would do this hem right here. I'll just grab this piece here. I'm gonna have different linings in all my jackets by the time I'm finished here. <laughs> so with right sides together, I'm just going to just do a quarter of an inch stitch. There's a lot of pressing involved here, so you get a lot of exercise depending on where your iron is. All right, I'm just gonna press this down away from the edge here. A little steam. And then go to the wrong side of the fabric. And this is where you have an option. It depends how thick your fabric is, but what I usually do is leave one section here because you have to imagine your hem is gonna be folded up like that. So there's really no need to do a double bias. So I will fold this in. Does it need to be that wide? Absolutely not. I just find it easier and it doesn't affect the look at all, so. All right, so we have that and we have this. Let's go back to the sewing machine. And just on the edge of that fold, or edge of that fabric that we'd stitched on, I'm gonna run one more stitch. And I hope you can see it with the colorful fabric and the odd colored thread, but it stitched that in place. So this is the edge of your hem. So the next thing I will do, this is fine. You could trim it back if you want to. I usually just leave it. Go back up to your iron, mark up your two inch hem. I'm just gonna visually do this. Give it a good pressing. And again, you would do this around the entire bottom of the sleeve. And there is your sleeve hem. I'm just gonna cut that off to make it easier. You would do that around the entire sleeve. And then what I usually do is tack these two edges inside the sleeve. This usually is fine. You could do a couple hand stitches or you could do top stitching from the outside, which we're gonna cover top stitching in another episode. So that's how easy it is to sew a sleeve and hopefully pressing that sleeve cap will help you out on that one. <laughs>